Welcome to Talking Straight on Nationalist Hub. My name is Suresh Kochate. The ban announced this morning by the Union Government of India on the Popular Front of India and its eight associates or affiliates or fronts as an unlawful association came into effect immediately for a period of five years. This was a long overdue act. PFI and its associates, including the Rehab India Foundation, the Campus Front of India, all India Imams Council, the National Confederation of Human Rights Organization, National Women's Front, Junior Front, Empower India were all declared unlawful. Most of these organizations are based out of Kerala. Popular Front of India is a renamed avatar of Simi as we all know it and was, which was banned by the Government of India. It was formed in 2006 and founded with the merger of the Karnataka Forum for Dignity and the National Development Front. Popular Front of India's National Chairman Abdul Rahman was the former National Secretary of SIMI, while the organization's State Kerala Secretary Abdul Hamid was the SIMI's former State Secretary in Kerala. Most of the former leaders of SIMI were either identified with PFI or were holding various portfolios in the organization. This fact was confirmed in 2012 by the government of Kerala, which claimed that the organization was a resurrection of the banned terrorist outfit Student Islamic Movement of India, or SIMI, an affiliate of Indian Mujahideen and other terrorist organization. Initially confined to Kerala and later Karnataka, the Popular Front of India sought to attract the youth and hardline elements to espouse the Islamic causes. One of its founding leaders had also stated once that the PFI's goal is to establish an Islamic state in India, something that the organization denied later. PFI got along with other organizations to merge itself. These include the Maniti Niti Parasara in Tamil Nadu and later in 2009 with Goa Citizens Forum, Rajasthan's Community Social and Educational Society, West Bengal's Nagarit Adhikar Suraksha Samiti and Manipur's Lilong Social Forum and Andhra Pradesh's Association of Social Justice. So basically they went to all states almost and got merger done. The organization, that is the PFI, has various wings to cater to different sections of the society, including the National Women's Front and the Campus Front of India, which is one of the most dangerous organizations. PFI has always been involved in violent clashes with the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangs in parts of Kerala and Karnataka. PFI cadres have been found to be with lethal weapons, bombs, gunpowder, swords by the authorities. In fact, the recent Hartal called in Kerala saw all these in use by the PFI. Several allegations have been made on the organization for having links with the terrorist organizations such as Taliban and Al-Qaeda. The various allegations include connection with groups, Islamic terror groups, possessing arms, kidnapping, murder, intimidation, hate campaigns, rioting, love jihad and various acts of religious extremism. In 2003, some of the members of PFI of course, this is not PFI then, but were arrested for writing and murdering eight Hindu fishermen in what is called the Marad Massacre in Kodikot in Kerala. Most horrific was the 2010 incident in which the Popular Front of India goons assaulted Professor T.J. Joseph, who published a controversial question paper, supposedly insulting the Prophet. His palm was chopped off, but he survived. But his college, a Christian institution, sacked him. His wife committed suicide and Professor Joseph was a broken man. In 2012, the Kerala government informed the Kerala High Court in an affidavit that the PFI had active involvement in 27 murder cases, mostly of CPIM or RSS workers. In 2014, the Kerala government again submitted before the Kerala High Court that the activities of NDF and PFI were involved in 27 communally motivated murder cases 86 attempt to murder cases and 106 communal cases registered across the state of Kerala. On 6th of July 2012, N. Sachin Gopal, a student of the modern ITC in Kannur in Kerala and the district leader of the Akhil Bharatiya Vidyarthi Parishad, was stabbed to death by members of the Campus Front of India, an affiliate of the PFI. On 17th of July 2012, Vishal Kumar, a 19-year-old ABVP Karikarta, was murdered in Kerala by the goons associated with the Campus Front of India again. He was one of the three ABVP Karikartas who suffered injuries during the unprovoked attack on them. 
They said that the attack occurred during the previous day to welcome the first year graduation students by the ABBP youth of the Chenganur Christian College in Alapura district of Kerala. In February 2019, a PFI activist was arrested for murdering Ramalingam, a PMK functionary murdered by a PFI gang on the night of February 5, 2019 in Tribhuvanam in Tamil Nadu. The police who registered a case arrested 10 PFI activists in connection with the incident and seized a car allegedly used by the assailants. The National Investigation Agency or the NIA also conducted simultaneous searches at the Poplar Front District Unit Officers in Tanjavur, Tiruchi and Karaikal. A retired Indian Army officer, P.C. Katoch, once claimed that the PFI maintains links with the Pakistan Intelligence Agency, ISI. In April 2013, Kerala police raided a training camp in Narath, Kanur, and arrested 21 activists of PFI. Two country-made bombs, a sword and raw materials for making bombs and pamphlets in the name of PFI were seized by the police. Let's go to the Mysore incident where two boys were kidnapped on 8 June 2011 from SBRR Mahajara College premises in Mysore and murdered by the members of the Karnataka Forum for Dignity who sought a ransom of 5 crore rupees to raise funds for their organization. In 2006, this organization merged with PFI. After the Assam riots of 2012, a SMS hate campaign was launched in the south of India threatening people from northeast with retribution, particularly after Ramzan. Investigators traced the source of these hate messages to Harkatul Jihad Islami and the Popular Front of India, along with affiliate organizations like Manita Niti Parasai and the Karnataka Forum for Dignity. More than 60 million messages were sent in a single day on 13th of August 2012. Some 20 to 30 percent of these messages were found to have been uploaded from Pakistan. Who are the sources and what are the sources of funding of PFI? Most of the money for PFI is funneled from the Gulf countries through money transfer through organizations like Western Union, camouflaged as remittances from family members in the Gulf. This money again goes back to the PFI. Another route is to funnel the money through Hawala by setting up shops across Kerala and showing huge purchases made in cash which again is rooted back to PFI. Now take Sidi Kapan, presently in jail in Uttar Pradesh under the Enforcement Directorate case and one of the key members of PFI, even though he does not identify himself as such. When asked about the PFI ban recently, in today in fact, Congress MP Kodukunal Suresh demands an RSS ban. Recently, the Maharashtra Congress President Nana Patole demanded a PFI ban without any qualms and criticized their pro-Pakistan slogans in Pune. Why does the Congress need a balancing act in Kerala to criticize the PFI? Let's look at some of the sources of funding. Hawala money, as I described to you before. Western Union money transfer that is done from the Gulf. And of course, gold smuggling, which is a big business in Kerala, particularly through airports like Karipur. Most of the money that we now have been told is actually rooted through cooperative banks in Kerala. Last night, many television channels in Kerala were talking about this after police raided many of the PDR PFI offices, seizing hard disk and other material. How is it done? Fake notes which are printed in other countries are brought in through different sources and deposited in these cooperative banks by members of PFI through accounts known to them. Later, when people come to withdraw, the customers come to withdraw the money, they are given some part of this fake currency along with a regular currency and so that the money goes back into circulation again. This is one of the modus operandi of PFI. And like the gold smuggling and the Hawala route and the shop-based funding, PFI takes many ways to make money. PFI is another avatar of SIMI. And sure enough, now that they've been banned, they will go back and find another avatar. Definitely, here the government of India needs to be very, very careful because SDPI, which is the political wing of the PFI, should also be banned. I believe the government of India has written to the Election Commission of India asking for a ban on SDPI itself. But SDPI has tied up with the CPM in Kerala and also the Congress Party in Kerala. Imagine, SDPI is a wing of PFI and they have a tie-up with Congress and CPM. In municipalities like Patanamdita and Shornur, the SDPI supports the CPM and also the Congress in many panchayats. This is the problem because these political parties are not caring for what the nation is getting into. They are only bothered about their vote banks. 
And definitely, as the PFI ban comes into place, it's time for the government of India also to look at these political parties, the CPM and the Congress, and how they are supporting the anti-national elements. Thank you for watching. Jai Hind. Please subscribe to Nationalist Hub English channel for more interesting videos. And don't forget to like and share this video. Nationalist Hub, it's a news revolution.